In this video, we're going to take a look at the binomial series. So the binomial series is one that we should be super familiar with already. And that's basically saying that if you have one plus x to some power, then we can find the coefficients using one and then k, which is the power, and then k times k minus one over two factorial, and then k times k minus one times k minus two over three factorial, and so on. And so again, I'm going to use that to help me with this Maclaurin series. And Maclaurin, remember, just means that it's centered at one. So I'm going to rewrite my function f of x in this format. So I'm going to have one plus x to the negative second, negative two, because it's in the denominator and obviously to the second power. So now I'm going to use this um, series, the binomial series, to write my first few terms so that I can determine my pattern. The first one is one, and that's when n is equal to zero. When n is equal to one, I'm going to use k times x. So k is negative two times x. When n is equal to two, I'm going to have k, which is negative two, times k minus one, which is negative three, over two factorial x squared. When n is equal to three, I'm going to have negative two times negative three times negative four over three factorial, x to the fourth, or sorry, x to the third, and so on. So let's see what I can simplify. Two factorial is two times one, three factorial is three times two times one. And let's see if I can just find some pattern based on what I have written down. So this guy is one, this guy is negative two x, so that's x to the first, and again, that's when n is equal to one. So I can see that my x power is going to be the same as n. But let's take a look at the coefficients. For my next term, I have negative two times negative three, which is positive six, divided by two factorial, which is two times one. So six divided by two is three. But keep in mind that two times one, this, these would essentially cancel. Two times two factorial. So I end up with negative three, uh, sorry, positive three, because I have a negative times a negative. So this is positive three x squared. And then I also notice that with three factorial, three and two cancel. I'm left, that should have been a negative four, I apologize. I'm left with minus four, whoops, switching up colors just for fun, minus four x cubed and then that pattern is going to continue. So what do I notice about my pattern? Again, this is when n is zero, when n is one, when n is two, when n is three. So the question is, what do I notice? Well, I notice, first of all, that my summation is alternating signs. So again, the summation as n goes from zero to infinity, I'm going to use negative one to the, because the first value is positive, then negative, my, my even powers need to be positive. So that's negative one to the nth power. And then what do I have? Well, if n is zero, my coefficient is one. If n is one, my coefficient is two. If n is two, my coefficient is three. If n is three, my coefficient is four. So it looks like my coefficient is just n plus one. And now looking at the x values, I've got when n is zero, it's x to the zero. When n is one, it's x to the first. So that just looks like x to the nth power. So that is my summation. And again, I was able to find it very easily because it matched that of the binomial series. Let's do another example. Same idea, we're going to use the binomial series to find the Maclaurin series. And again, that just means we're centered at zero for f of x is equal to one over one plus x to the fourth. So again, I'm just going to think about this as the binomial series. So I'm going to write this as one plus x 
to the negative fourth. And then I'm going to use my pattern to find the first couple of values in the series. So the first one would be one. The second one, keeping in mind that k is negative four, would be negative four, so minus four x. And then k is negative four, k minus one is negative five over two factorial, and then x squared. And then I would have negative four, negative five, negative six, over three factorial x cubed and so on. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of cleanup first before we um, try to write this as a series. So my cleanup would be that one is still one and then this is minus four x and this would be a negative times a negative which is a positive and so I'm just going to write them as four times five over two factorial. And you might be thinking, well, why didn't you just take four times five and divide it by two times one? And it's because I'm not trying to find the answer, I'm trying to find the pattern. So again, this is when n is zero. This is when n is one. This is when n is two. And then the next value would be negative times a negative times a negative. So that would be a minus and then four times five times six, and then over three factorial, x cubed, and so on. So what I'm trying to do is now look at what I have and see if I can come up with some sort of pattern to where I could simplify this. So for instance, one thing that I notice right away is that this is an alternating series. Positive, negative, positive, negative, etc. So I know that in my numerator I'm going to have negative one and then because my first value is positive, negative one to the n. Looking at the x values, when n is zero, I have x to the zero. When n is one, I have x to the first. When n is two, I have x to the second. So that means I also have x to the n. So I'm getting closer, but now I need to look at the numbers and how am I going to represent that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just focus on the one, the four, the four times five over two factorial, the four times five times six over three factorial. And of course the next one would be four times five times six times seven over four factorial. And I need to come up with some pattern, some strategy. So if I take a look, say at this one, four times five times six times seven. divided by four factorial. Now I know if I were trying to represent this, I could write four times five times six times seven as seven factorial divided by three factorial because this is seven times six times five times four and then the three, two, one and the denominator would cancel out. And then I still have four factorial. So that's one way to think about it. Okay, and that's for n is equal to four. All right, let's do the same thing here. Four times five times six times, oh, just four times five times six, divided by three factorial. Well, four times five times six can be rewritten as six factorial divided by three factorial because six, five, four would be divided by three, two, one, but I still have this three factorial and this is when n is equal to three. And when n is equal to two, I have four times five divided by two factorial. And four times five could be thought of as five factorial divided by three factorial, and then I still have this two factorial. So I'm feeling pretty good about the fact that I see a pattern. 
and the pattern is in my numerator I can take this is for n equals 2 I can take how do I get from 4 to 7 well I can take n plus 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial that's this part of each of these fractions n plus 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial and then also take n factorial. That is my final solution. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at some well-known power series for elementary functions and talk about how to use those to rewrite other functions.